Hey guys, Jack here and welcome to a new video. Today we're taking an updated look at Battleborn. I've already done a couple of videos on this before. It's had a closed beta already but now it's in open beta and that's started so everyone can get stuck in onto next gen consoles and on PC. So it's a good time to explain what the game's all about and drop some impressions on you. Now just before we dive into the details, I've got a sponsored message from Loot Crate. This is going to be my first ever unboxing unboxing. Wow. So Loot Crate is a monthly box you can buy for less than $20. You get six to eight items that include licensed gear, apparel, collectibles, unique one-of-a-kind items and more. The one they sent me here was Batman vs Superman themed, epic rivalries in pop culture, that sort of thing. There's a reversible hat to beanie hat. You want to be Daredevil or do you want to be the Punisher? I certainly know who I'd be. Definitely the Punisher. Way cooler and he can see. There's a little Alien vs Predator figurine in here too. Who's it going to be? Alien. It was Alien. He's a pretty cool guy and doesn't afraid of anything. How exciting. There's a wallet here. Recyclable as well. Batman vs Superman. Got some extra little bits in there for you to find too. And then there's this Spock vs Spock Star Trek t-shirt. So you can be the ultra nerd you were born to be. A little badge pin thing here. Apparently this gets you something if you go to the website on the back. And finally a Harley Quinn comic. That's a Loot Crate exclusive. Joker's girlfriend there getting up to all sorts of trouble. So there we have it, guys. If you want to sign up to Loot Crate, you can use my link in the description below, lootcrate.com slash frags, and use the code frags to save 10% on any new subscription. And the deadline to sign up for the crate is the 19th of each month. Right then, let's get back to Battleborn. Let's first deal with the elephant in the room. I'm sure you can all see the resemblance here to Borderlands. Now, I'm hoping you've also heard the phrase beauty is only skin deep, and that couldn't apply more here. Sure, it's got the same quirky design and over-the-top characters, and the humour that you'd expect them to bring, as well as the cartoony intros and cutscenes, and you can even play the whole story in co-op. So far, I've made them sound like pretty similar games, but when you look deep down into Battleborn's personality, they are very different games and Battleborn offers something quite different from the Borderlands experience. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about what Battleborn is actually all about. It's an FPS game first and foremost, to be clear. It's got melee characters in the game, but it's all done from a first person perspective and doesn't utilize any third person views. The story revolves around five different factions, the LLC, the Peacekeepers, the Generic Empire, the Eldred and the Rogues. They don't really get along and all have different views and technology, but they band together to take on a common enemy, an alien race called Varelsi. Oh, and the heroes of each faction, they're called Battleborn, hence the name. The single player can be played entirely on your own or cooperatively and the open beta gives you access to two missions to try out. I've played them and they're both good fun. As with any game like this though, it's the multiplayer that will keep players coming back and that's where this game looks to shine. In multiplayer you'll play in team based 5v5 modes, you'll be playing either incursion, capture or meltdown. In the open beta you'll be able to try out incursion and meltdown. In incursion each team has two large spider drones that they must defend whilst also trying to destroy the enemies. You must kill one then progress to the next. Meltdown on the other hand has two incinerators in the middle of the map and minions are sent from your spawn towards the glorious flames. Your team earns points for every minion that manages to throw himself into the incinerator and of course you must kill the enemy's minions to stop them from scoring. Capture on the other hand is more of a typical domination style game mode and if you've played any other FPS ever, COD, Battlefield, you'll be very familiar with it. It's the heroes here that really make the game though, 25 Battleborn to select from all of which you can try during the beta either straight away or by unlocking them through progression. There is a big variety here in characters both visually and how they operate. You've got heroes who snipe with a pistol and throw owls around, it sounds pretty crazy and it is, and then again you've also got melee based characters with swords and healing mushrooms, it's certainly not short of variety. 
The design of the heroes is also very MOBA based, which is why you'll hear lots of comparisons with MOBAs. Each character has a specific weapon type and abilities and they can also charge up an ultimate ability they use. That's not too special these days, even games like Overwatch have that sort of system and that's certainly not a MOBA, that's much more of a team based Twitch shooter. What makes Battleborn a little more unique however is its helix system and in game progression. During the game your character progresses and ranks up. During that rank up process you can pick a unique stat off what's called the helix system. To give you an example, Wrath is a melee based character with a particularly shiny red sword. His first stage of his helix offers you a choice between having his crossblade ability pass through multiple enemies and damage them, or having his other ability, Catalytic Smash, extend outwards but last for less time. There's lots of interesting trade offs here. Essentially, throughout this entire helix process, you can build up your character exactly how you want it. And say you have a Wrath on your team and the enemy has one as well, they could both be vastly different different towards the end of the game in how they've been set up. This particular progression is per game and resets when the game ends so you're not committed to it, although there is an overall persistent character progression system that allows players to unlock certain collectibles and skins and even extra helix options. Battleborn is also a very team orientated game, healers are essential and a good one can make or break a game. As well as that you need a good balance of the other heroes, a split of tanky characters that you can use to push forward as well as having some strong damage dealers and support characters just to balance it all out. There's also some map strategy here, you'll notice spread across the map are shards. Both small ones you can pick up and larger ones that you have to destroy. Make sure you go around picking them up because these can be used as currency to build tactical structures. Stuff like turrets, healing stations and wait for it, super minions. The turrets and healing stations are pretty self explanatory and they can be upgraded too, but the super minions are a little different. Your team can purchase a super minion at their base if they've got enough shards and it spawns in a giant minion that the enemy team will need to focus fire on to take out. It helps to push your minions forward and also to keep some members of the enemy team busy at crucial points of the game. Remember though the enemy team can buy them too if they've managed to save up enough shards. On top of this there's also a loot system built into the game, earn or purchase loot boxes with in game currency and within you can get some interesting gear that will give you certain benefits during the game. And this will be stuff like reducing cooldowns and improving movement speed. Some will also have negative effects to balance them out, so maybe one will give you more damage but it might slightly reduce your health for instance. Overall you need to remember that your character will get stronger the longer into the game you progress as will the enemies, working as a team is also essential to successfully win games. Meltdown is much more of a classic MOBA game mode which is about lanes and defeating minions whereas Capture is way more familiar for an FPS game mode. Also learning what each character does will not only improve how you play with them but it will mean that you've got a better understanding of what they can do to you so you're more prepared when facing them. So there we have it guys, I fancied doing a little overview piece on this game and I am enjoying it so far. I hope that's helped to get you up to speed with the game and maybe even decide if you fancy giving it a try or not. As I said, you can actually jump into the game right now on PC, PS4 or Xbox One as it's in open beta. It's actually a really strategic FPS MOBA and it offers a different flavour of game that you might get in something like Overwatch which is definitely more fast paced and aim reliant in my opinion. As always, thank you for watching guys you're all awesome give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video a thumbs down if you didn't and i'll see you in the next one